expired. Senator Hume. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy President. I was here two days ago, two days ago rising in this chamber at exactly the same time and ironically to speak on exactly the same issues. This is like deja vu all over again. And you know what? And you know I, the, the last thing I want to do, the last thing I want to do is carry this metaphor any further. But I think one more time we have to refer to Alice in Wonderland. This is getting curiouser and curiouser. I am so fundamentally disappointed with the questions on notice asked by those opposite. There is no substance. There is no legislative focus. The government, the government has important work to do, and you, opposite, those opposite, have a duty to constituents. You have a duty to all Australians uh, to uh, to get your act together, to start dealing with the substantive issues of policy, to get on with the job of statecraft. And I thought perhaps today, I thought perhaps today that we would have some serious questions, but sadly not. Once again, we're playing political games and personal witch hunts rather than policy development and policy passage. So perhaps honourable senators will be more lucky next week and more dedicated in the next sitting week. This government, however, is getting on with the job. On the issue of, of Senator Day, I don't think this government could be more transparent in this matter. It has repeated these assertions. Both the Special Minister of State and the Minister for Finance have made extensive, extensive statements to the Senate on Monday, the 7th of November, outlining the timeline and the circumstances surrounding the lease of former Senator Day's electorate office. The government has moved a motion in the Senate to refer the election of former Senator Bob Day uh, to the High Court due to a potential breach of section 44.5 of the Constitution. And this passed the Senate unanimously, unanimously on Monday, Monday the 7th of November. There is clearly only one body that has the power to determine whether former Senator Day was in breach of section 44, and that is the High Court. Those opposite agreed. This matter has now been referred to the High Court, and it would be foolish of anybody to preempt their findings. And it's very important that neither House of Parliament should try and have this matter tried outside of that court process. On the issue of, uh, of apprenticeships that uh, Senator Cameron has raised, clearly this government supports vocation, vocational education and training and has made that support abundantly clear. Many stakeholders have raised concerns about apprenticeships and this government has listened to those concerned. This is not surprising. It's not surprising given that Labor, given that Labor cut $1.2 billion in apprentice incentives, apprenticeship incentives in government, leading to the largest, the largest single drop in apprenticeships on record. Senator Birmingham established and commissioned uh, an apprenticeship reform advisory group to consider a range of issues, including incentives, pre-apprenticeships and alternative models. The advisory group made 22 recommendations, including to explore and pilot alternative apprenticeship delivery arrangements. The government addressed this recommendation provided by providing $9.2 million under the Apprenticeship Training Alternative Delivery Pilots Initiative. And the Australian government is funding five projects under pilots, and the pilots are being delivered by Master Builders Australia, the National Electricity and Communications Association, the North East Vocational College, the Australian Industry Group, the AI Group, and Price Waterhouse Coopers. The pilots will test training models which provide alternative skills development options for both industry and those undertaking the training. The Turnbull government wants to support industry efforts to explore these new arrangements and examine and test potential regulatory or administrative barriers to innovation, uh, industry-led apprenticeship training practices. All five, all five of these pilots will be subject to ongoing evaluation and the findings will be used to contribute to an evidence base that will inform future policy developments. 
This government is getting on with the job and delivering that which Australians expect and deserve. Thank you, Senator Dunham. Senator Watt. Thank you, Madam Deputy President. Oh, sorry, beg your pardon, <laughs> Senator.